hence, of course, is a very big topic. Um, uh, and uh, so I thought that the, you know, the best idea would be uh, to, to try and find out what you want to know or what you might, might be curious uh, about uh, when it comes to when it comes to quantum physics. Um, I can say uh, you know a few general things, uh, of course, of introduction. Um, quantum mechanics is, of course, the uh, uh, the fundamental mathematical construction that, that physicists use to uh, to explain the workings uh, of we might say of the world, but uh, primarily. Uh, of the of, of the micro world uh, of, of, of the, the world of, of, of little things like uh, atoms and molecules, uh, although uh, uh, in principle uh, we we sort of regard quantum mechanics as being the uh, the fundamental mechanical theory of, of, of everything, uh, the place where where uh, its its consequences uh, show up unavoidably. Uh, is in the world of atoms, molecules, and uh, s and smaller things, uh, elementary particles, uh, uh, and, uh, uh, and 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 such and such like. Um, though uh, you might apply uh, the, the, the principles of quantum mechanics to the you know the two things we encounter in everyday life, like rather than, the, than an electron, you might apply it to a baseball. Um, uh, it's very it's 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 very easy to see that that that, that when when the energies and the size of objects get as large as, as the day-to-day -day scale of things, then whatever quantum mechanics might be saying about them uh, would be uh, uh, extremely, extremely small and, and, and difficult things, difficult things to observe. Um, so quantum mechanics is, is, is from a physicist's point, physicist point of view, uh, extremely uh, extremely central and, and extremely important, uh, and the vast majority of modern day physics uses it uh, either directly or indirectly in, in one way or another. Uh, nevertheless, uh, quantum mechanics uh, has um, interpretational difficulties, uh, and these are the, 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 the features which, which I think attract the attention of, uh, you know, of, of non-specialist people. Uh, they also attract the attention of, of, of physicists, some physicists more than the more than another, more than others, uh, and uh, uh, these aspects of the of, of, of the theory uh, have been uh, a part of the story since the very beginning, uh, and they and they haven't gone away. Um, so I think it's a couple of things which at least I believe are true, uh, and 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 I think you can make a case. Make, make a strong case for about about quantum mechanics. I mean, I I think that quantum mechanics is the uh, is the pinnacle of intellectual achievement of science, uh, uh, the and by of well, theoretical science, uh, in terms of uh, uh, human beings trying to conceptualize the world around them and, and put together put together some conceptual ideas, some theoretical ideas, uh, which 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 explain things. Uh, in other words, get numbers right. Uh, and are predictive, then I think it's right at the top of the stack. I think that's I think that's the first thing I think think is true. Uh, the second thing that I think is true is that if you think deeply about quantum mechanics, uh, it overturns overturns the very paradigm on which the majority of people presume science is built. Uh, that is that you can really uh, understand. Um, uh, the way the world is put together, uh, in, 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 in using this sort of reduct reductionist approach that science uses, uh, that is that uh, what we see is maybe not the whole the, the whole story. So we have to look inside of what we see, and inside there we find some more things, and that explains uh, what, what, what 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 appears uh, to us at the at the you know the more macroscopic level. Uh, this whole whole point of view, uh, uh, which is just taken for granted uh, in 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 most areas of science, uh, you might call it the materialist point of view. I mean, the physical world is made out of things, out of bits and pieces of stuff, and those bits and pieces of stuff uh, have have uh, laws of behavior uh, which certainly don't involve uh, consciousness or any of these sort of uh, um, slippery human uh, characteristics, and so they're very objective. And 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 uh, 
once one understands these bits and pieces and these laws, uh, everything is taken care, care of. I mean, uh, the, the, the words that have often been, are often used about that is the, is the clockwork universe, the mechanistic universe, the universe that was, was left, uh, over, uh, left to us after, um, after Isaac Newton, uh, who, of course, uh, uh, applied uh, this sort of objective, rational approach to, to explaining uh, things that were very mysterious during his time. Uh, most, maybe most notably, the um, the solar system and the orbits of the planets. Uh, he just postulated a few basic mathematical laws, uh, together with the idea that what's out there are, are chunks of, of rock, of mass, uh, and then said that it showed that according to these laws, um, this stuff will move so and so in such and such a fashion, and it just keeps on doing it, uh, and there's no need for there to be someone there pushing it around or anything like that. Uh, this sort of view of view of things uh, uh, is, is is what quantum mechanics undermines, and the people that, that, that invented quantum mechanics were aware of that, and it sort of troubled them a lot, uh, and um, and it, it, it continues it, it continues this this sort of philosophical interpretation side uh, of quantum mechanics continues to be to be upsetting to some people uh, even to, even until today. So, I mean, what I really wanted to do was sort of get some specific questions which we could explore uh, or, or talk about I mean, from you guys rather than have me uh, rant, rant, and rave. I can say some things about, you know, the early days of quantum mechanics, uh, who did what and what they did. Uh, I can say some things about some of the, some of the, some of the directions that are being explored, explored uh, in research fields today, which directly involve quantum mechanics. So these things can all be said, and, and, and maybe I'll say, say some of those things in, in, as we, you know, as we, as we have some questions and 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 and, uh, and talk about them. Uh, I mean, to start some sort of interaction going, maybe I, I, I should first ask people uh, get some sense of people's backgrounds. So uh, I mean, how many people have encountered quantum mechanics in one way or another through their schooling, that is, in 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 a, in a university course? Or high school, so one, two, three, four, five, six, nine, and so about fifty percent, or maybe a little bit more than fifty percent. Uh, how many of them? How many? How many of these people did, have done that uh, at university? They've all all university, not just at not just at high school. Uh, um, uh, how about the others? Are there any, any any of the other people that are curious about? Uh, have, they, have encountered quantum mechanics uh, in, in a more sort of um, popular framework, let's say, and have curiosity about it. But you, you guys have. We've got a new scientist. Okay, so you've got a new scientist. Anyone, anyone else? Prepared to say something there? I guess through music was my first introduction to it. What was the first part? <laughs> through music. Through music. Yes. Oh, okay. So how, 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 how did this happen through music? Um, a lot of the things and ideas that were explored on the album work were revealed. Certain things that we uh, wasn't aware of to start with and that me having love for that music led me to a curiosity to look it up and then through there watch the docos and one thing. So you, you so you just started exploring? Well, started with about, music? Probably about three or four years ago. Uh -huh. Yeah, and so you yeah, just a constant curiosity for me and applying it to everyday life, and yeah, yeah. And I was just right to come along to it and listen. So. Well, and what, what, what was, do you know? Do you know? Can you identify what, 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 what maybe specifically in the, uh, you know, in this quantum direction that you found particularly attractive that piqued your interest? Because I mean, from one point of view, uh, you know, we, we we might say, well, it's sort of a technical subject. For some people they just use it to calculate this and that, which they use might use be relevant in their lab, but clearly that wouldn't be why you were you were attracted to it. So I think I'm kind of interested by it because it's, from what I understand it's the only thing where science meets religious or spiritual beliefs. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's one of the only sort of part of meets science or if that makes any sense. Well it does have some sense. I mean this is related to the to the what I said about the interpretation of quantum mechanics. Yeah, um, uh, I think um, I 
I think, yeah, this, yeah, from what I do, I'm just a bit of a to my everyday life. Um, Realising more of this what I do and what, what I have control of, what, what I observe, what, how much more I observe having been open to this side of things. Uh -huh. things where, like where have you mainly got your information from? Off the internet. Off the internet. Which I, I mean, there's lots, of pop, there's lots of popular books also. Oh, I mean, of course, there's all that, you know, sort of the secret and you know, all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, more so. Have you read the Dancing Gundi Masters? <coughs> no, not familiar with that. Okay. I mean, one, one, one thing that comes to mind from, 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 from what you're saying is that, is that there, I mean, that, that, well, I mentioned the book, The Dancing Gundi Masters. Uh, that book was written set in the 1970s or 1980s. <coughs> uh, I don't remember exactly when it came out. Uh, and its basic, its main theme was that uh, there are elements of, uh, of, of, uh, of Quantum mechanics introduces you to, L to ways of thinking uh, which are maybe closer to, to uh, Eastern religions and, mystic and Eastern mysticism than, uh, you know, than, than, than typical Western ways of thinking. Uh, and so it was leaning in the direction you were sort of suggesting about uh, having some connection with spirituality, etc. Of course, this side of this this side of quantum mechanics is 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 uh, in some in some ways one could say sort of controversial. Here. Yeah. In, in, in that in that uh, you know the hardcore guy in the lab who's just using it to calculate something might might you know be quite opposed to that to that, to that side. Well, I'm, I mean, I'm interested in that side of it as well. It gives me, in some strange way, a better understanding of the other side. Yeah. As well. Yeah. So anyone want to, else want to sort of pop in on, on, on this particular direction? Maybe you could just elaborate on you know, the interpretations of quantum mechanics and how they lead to that sort of interpretation or how, how the problems that are associated with trying to make some sense of what quantum mechanics predicts to each of those more controversial aspects of this. There are various, yeah, okay, there are, there are various maybe, maybe uh, Sides to this, and angles to this. Um, so this could go on for a lot, a, a long, a long time in a way. Um, okay, so let me let me let me give a brief a brief sort of uh, view on on the differences between quantum mechanics and classical mechanics. So classical mechanics. Is if you take any first year course in physics, or even if you take physics in high school, and then you may even take some other course like chemistry or engineering, uh, you will learn uh, some classical mechanics, either a little or a lot. Uh, and classic, so classical mechanics are the uh, are the are the rules and the laws uh, first put down by by Newton, uh, which uh, govern, describe, tell us how uh, material objects move. Uh, so classical mechanics is of course set uh, in, 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 I mean there's a, there's a stage, there's a platform on which one imagines this, this stuff happens and that is space, three, di three dimensions, which we sort of take for granted and we imagine we understand, we, 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 picture, we picture the physical world around us in three dimensional space. And as I look around this world, around this room, uh, you know, I have a sense of what's here uh, and what I'm seeing, and, and I have you guys located in, in, in places, three-dimensional space, uh, and you're made out of stuff. I mean, who knows what this stuff is, but you're made out of something, so you're concrete. You're sitting there in three dimensions. Uh, and then, as as I go from instant to instant, the distribution uh, of of this of this stuff, you know, moves, changes, uh, and that's what I, you know. That's what we call dynamics. Things move, so you you might get get up and move, 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 move walk out of the room. That's an obviously big movement, but someone here's just twitching their foot. That's a smaller movement, and everything in the physical world, in its sort of most simple description, is like this. So instead of thinking about people, which are complicated things, we can just think maybe about a billion tape. Uh, and there we have these 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 mass massive balls. They sit there, uh, and and they move around in, 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 once they've been dipped uh, in, in a certain you know, in a certain fashion. 
So the, 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 the rules that, that, that Isaac Newton set down uh, tell us uh, how that configuration changes. So they're mathematical equations. Uh, and they, they, they make that description by assigning, by assigning properties to each of the pieces. So each of our balls has a position where it's located on the table, uh, and it has a speed, or what we call a momentum. It tells it how fast it's moving and what direction it's moving. Uh, and these these equations uh, that uh, you know that, that Newton that Newton set out uh, allow us to, given an initial configuration, uh, where the things are and how they're moving, and understanding uh, the forces that will, will will take place if they bounce into each other. All of that being set out uh, at the very beginning, uh, then uh, uh, these <coughs> equations will will predict what happens. I mean, they will just you solve the equation that says where everything is going to go. Um, so, so uh, at the end of the of the of the 19th century, this was sort of the way uh, scientists thought that uh, that everything in the everything in the universe sort of could be understood in terms of these equations. Uh, once, you, once once the configuration was 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 defined, uh, then everything that happened in the future was completely predicted. Uh, and, and, and it was just a case of, of being able to solve the equation which might be very complicated uh, to, to know exactly where it went to. Uh, so this was the so-called mechanistic universe. It's a very cold picture of the universe uh, because uh, everything is simply taking place out there. Uh, there's certainly no role for consciousness and there's certainly no role for, role for human beings. Uh, more generally, we could say there's no role for volition that is the, the, the things happening because they will happen, not the volition of a spirit of a god or, 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 or anything else. Uh, it's, it's, it's all all rather all rather cut and dry. Now in quantum mechanics, uh, this picture gets overturned in 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 in, in various ways. Um, uh, and as I indicated at the beginning, uh, these these ways of overturning things, in fact, sort of upset the, 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 the physicists that were building quantum mechanics because they were pretty comfortable uh, with this well-defined, concrete picture of how things work. Um, uh, so uh, so I'll, maybe I'll mention three aspects uh, to, the way, to the way this picture get, get, gets overturned. And, and, and all of them, in some sense, soften the picture and make it more sort of uh, approachable for human beings, although less maybe comprehensible. Uh, so the first one is is, is that quantum mechanics uh, is fundamentally statistical theory. It does not tell you ever exactly, well, no, there are special cases where it will tell you exactly what's going to happen. But most generally, it cannot say, uh, if, I, if I arrange my experiment in the lab and set everything up completely controlled as well as it can possibly be controlled, uh, quantum mechanics cannot tell you exactly what will take place. It does not do that. Uh, what it does is it tells you, uh, is, it, is it calculates probabilities for certain options to occur. And so uh, when you uh, actually carry out your experiment and you do it just once, so you measure something, you measure where this particle is, for example, you have an instrument that can measure where it is, uh, you will get an answer and you'll find, yes, I found it right here, at that location there. But if you set up that exact same experiment, everything exactly the same way, and set it off again and measure a second time, you may find it over here, a different place. And if you do it many, many, many times, every time you make a measurement, you may find it somewhere else. Now what quantum mechanics will tell you is the probability, the probability for, for the measurement getting a certain result. And this applies to all scenarios. Uh, in the micro world, it tells you probabilities of where things are, and so it seems that in some sense, uh, well, you, this I, I said this sort of softens the whole picture. Uh, if you're inclined to 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 want to believe in a god or whatever else, then certainly you could have your god controlling the dice. Uh, that, 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 that every time you measure it, this thing is going to turn up somewhere. Uh, uh, the, 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 the the laws of, of physics as they currently exist do not give you any way of saying where specifically it will turn up on that occasion and why you will get that result on that occasion. So that leaves some, 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 some room, some scope for, for some mysterious uh, force in the, in the background. Yeah. Uh, 
at what level is this? Atomic or subatomic? Uh, this 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 uh, sort of behavior begins to show up dramatically at the atomic level. So you can see that acting on a proton. Absolutely, uh, and you can see it acting on things bigger than protons. Um, uh, that what, asking that question, in fact, brings uh, a, a very concrete thing to my mind because just before I came here this afternoon, I've had this blizzard of emails turning up. Uh, They've all come from inside the physics department, uh, and and um, and maybe a couple from the chemistry department. Uh, and the question was this: someone in the physics department is looking over the the curriculum for teaching the teaching high school physics, and it asked for input as to what should be taught. And someone had said we should not teach the Bohr atom because the Bohr atom Bohr model of the atom is wrong. And so lots of opinions come out about whether you should teach the Bohr model of the atom. Now the Bohr model of the atom illustrates this, this thing that you're asking precisely because uh, the Bohr model of the atom is this, is this planetary model. You know that an atom is a, is a thing at the center, a nucleus, which has positive electrical charge uh, and, uh, and then electrons, which have negative electric charge, circulating around it in orbits. Uh, and so if you think about our solar system, the sun, that's the nucleus, the planets, those are the electrons. They're not held together by gravity now, they're held together by electrical uh, attraction, Coulomb's law. Uh, and that is the Bohr model of the atom. He applied classical physics to describe these orbits, just like the laws that are used to do, to do, to, to do the solar system. But he, he, he then imposed some, some restrictions which enabled him to, to, to extract some quantum information. But the, but the point of this story is that that picture of the atom is very deceiving. That, you, that, it is, that quantum mechanics does not allow you at all to think that an atom, uh, that the inter think about the internal structure of an atom in that pictorial way. This is the, the two, eight, eight, two. Well, it, eight you, model. from these models you get the two, eight, eight, two. But, 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 but what I want, want to concentrate on for the moment is that if I ask people who, who, who are not sort of specifically educated in physics and taken a full quantum rate mechanics course to, 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 to give me a, a sort of a picture of what an atom is, it will be something like what I just said. And as far as it goes, that's not, 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 not a bad thing. It's better to have some idea than no idea. But there is something fundamentally wrong with that picture from the point of view of quantum mechanics. That quantum mechanics does not allow you to think about a composite object like an atom in, in, in that very concrete fashion in terms of its pieces. You know, that I can visualize here yeah, the nucleus is there and the electron is there and then the electron moves around like this. The electron moves. In practice, in fact, what, what, what quantum mechanics tells you is it gives you a, 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 a probability distribution for where the electron might be found. And if you were to make some sort of measurement that can actually uh, localize it, you might measure the location of the electron and you did repeated measurement, you'll find it in a different place every time. Uh, and the only thing that quantum mechanics will calculate for you uh, is, 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 as I said, the probability distribution. So it's as if there's someone in the background throwing a dice and deciding, uh, throwing a die and deciding well, where, where, where this thing will turn up on each occasion. That, that statement is true for, you know, for, in fact, for every physical attribute of any physical system in principle. But when the physical systems get very big, like me and you, but even lots more than that, when they get very big, this distribution of, of, of where you may find it located or what speed you might measure for it gets very narrow. In other words, the, the uncertainty gets very, very small. And for all practical purposes, you can make a very precise prediction. But things on the scale of atoms and smaller, uh, these predictions are very, the, the, the distribution will be very, very broad. And is this where the, the sort of uh, electron cloud? That's the electron idea. cloud. Uh, and so, so we now come to the electron cloud. So that, that, that probability distribution is, is the electron cloud. Now, when Schrodinger first, when Schrodinger, well, when, when people first started building quantum mechanics uh, in, a, in, a, you know, in, a, in a proper fashion with some real mathematical equations so you could really calculate things, uh, they would have liked to have thought about this electron cloud as, as a genuine cloud. You know, in the following sense. We used to think that electrons were dots, that were just points in space. They had a certain mass or weight, and they had a certain charge. But then, at the time, they were located in some very precise place. 
okay, we've now learned about quantum mechanics. Uh, and, 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 and quantum mechanics tells us that's not quite right. Instead of the electron being a point and, and going around the nucleus like this in our atom, in fact, the electron is spread out and is a cloud. And so it's like the electric charge has become all smeared. Well, that's not such a big problem. I mean, we could think about electrons like that. Uh, the problem is, it, the problem, however, comes that you have to think that way about the cloud to fully, to fully understand quantum mechanics. But when you come to measure where the electron is, you'll find it at a point. You won't find a cloud. So every time you measure its position, it suddenly decides, oh, I'm here. So, so the cloud is not really a, 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 a continuous distribution of electricity. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's an ambiguity in some sense about where the electron is. It expresses the ambiguity about, so the electron is, is spreading its influence uh, all around the nucleus of the atom in a particular shape, depending on with, with the orbits it's in. Uh, but it, whenever you look at the electron, you'll find it, so it, you'll find it in a particular place. Uh, and this cloud is, is in fact, uh, in the equations of quantum mechanics, <coughs> this cloud uh, is described by a wave. So, 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 in some sense, the electron then is has become a wave. But it acts some of the time as a wave, and I need to think of it as a wave to do the mathematics right and to get the correct predictions. But as soon as I look look for it, and measure it, it's as if it's in a single place. It looks like a particle. So it has both of these attributes. It can behave like a wave, uh, distributed in space. And doing all the things that waves can do, it can, they can interfere. So if I take a single electron and I send it through two little slits in a screen like this, the electron goes through the slits. When it hits the wall on the other side, I will get a dot at one place. Imagine that the, on the other side I have a fluorescent screen. So I send one electron through. Okay, I have a screen here. There's two slits, two vertical holes. And I send one electron through. On the other side, I have a fluorescent screen that goes flash when the electron hits. So I send one electron through, it goes flash, just in one place. I send another through, it goes flash in another place. I keep sending them through one at a time. I've now sent a billion through. I've got a billion flashes. Now, the density of those flashes on the screen will have stripes, an interference pattern, a perfect wave problem. And that, that, wave, that wave property has been built up I couldn't see the wave property from one electron. It turned up at just one particular place. And this, I might have carried this experiment over many hours. It took me a long time to get all of these electrons through the screen, hitting the screen. But somehow they all know about each other that they have to make their flashes organized in this interference pattern. So there's this peculiar, peculiar uh, uh, relationship between the, 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 these, these sort of contradictory aspects of the electron being, the electron being uh, distributed in space as, a, as if it was a cloud or a wave, and the electron being in some special place. And the, and, and the, the thing that, that manages, manages these two contradictory sort of pictures to sit side by side without getting contradiction is probability. It's the interpretation of the, the, of the, of the quantum mechanical equations that it, we, I, I only it, I, the theory only tells you about the probabilities that things will occur in a, certain, in, in a particular way. Uh, so I, we went off on a tangent, a bit of a tangent there, but that, that was the first sort of softening of the whole classical fiction was that we now have probabilities. Uh, and, and so there's, there's some, what, what the probability aspect says is, is that there's something uh, that's fundamentally inexplicable. You know, that the, the, this most, most mathematical, most precise, most fundamental of all sciences cannot tell you precisely what will happen on each occasion you run your experiment. And, 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 it, and it says that, that the, the theory that, 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 that the physicist has says that it's not a case of I, I can't tell you because I haven't yet learned how to. It says that you, you cannot know. This, this cannot be explained. Uh, now, the presumption of science, of course, prior to this is that everything can be explained. Uh, and, it's, and so some, some, some scientists are very uncomfortable with this missing, this missing missing piece. They want the world to be completely deterministic. It's the famous statement of Albert Einstein who said, God does not play dice. Uh, now, if you wish to believe in God and dice, you can say, God does play dice. And, and, and so, 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 yeah.
Yes, uh, two, two questions. Uh, first one is just with uh, whatever sort of models of the, like the electron cloud and stuff like that. Um, how, how does, just sort of technically, how does the, or does it, how does the Heisenberg uncertainty principle relate to trying to observe these locations of, um, like, of the electron and the electron cloud? And secondly, just um, the gentleman in the, in the cheese cut pack over there um, was talking about the relations of um, the implications of um, uh, quantum mechanics to, to Easter religion and stuff like that. Um, my question to you is, as someone that studies uh, quantum mechanics, um, could you point to any sort of, I guess, revelations or like things that you've learned through quantum mechanics that affect the way that you observe sort of the physical world around you or how that's, I guess, changed as you've studied this? Well, uh, so the first question was about the Heisenberg uncertainty relation. Uh, so the Heisenberg uncertainty relation uh, is uh, it's, it's the first of a number of similar statements that can be made. So it's the first and the, and the most famous uh, statement, uh, which, which quantifies uh, uh, in a very clear way uh, the statistical aspect of making measurements on quantum systems. Uh, and what it says is that, uh, what it says is that uh, certain, uh, Certain pairs of physical properties are fundamentally incompatible with the, with, with one another. In other words, you you, you cannot assign a, a definite value to both of these properties for a particle, let's say, at the same time. So 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 the simplest version of that is 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 the location of the particle and how fast it's moving, so the position and the momentum. The uncertainty relation says that. You can, in principle, prepare your experiment so that you will be able to predict with 100% certainty exactly where you are going to find the particle. That is possible. Uh, you can also, uh, by different type of apparatus, prepare your experiment so that you can know with 100% certainty exactly how fast this particle will be moving. You know its momentum. Uh, but you cannot do both things at the same time, is what it says. That you cannot prepare there's no apparatus that can prepare your particle so that you can predict with 100% certainty uh, where it will be found and how fast it's moving, both at the same time. Uh, and, it, and, and the uncertainty relation writes, is, is a mathematical uh, uh, inequality, a mathematical relationship, which says, look, uh, if there is, we, we, we can define an, an, a degree of uncertainty in the position. So the position can be predicted, it'll be here, but plus or minus, let's call it delta. Uh, delta X, let's call it. It will be at this location, plus or minus delta X. Somewhere in that range you will find it. Plus or minus delta X. And the, and the, uh, and the speed of the particle, the momentum, uh, can be predicted. It will be here, plus or minus, let's call it delta P. And the Heisenberg uncertainty relation says that the product of those two uncertainties, the delta X multiplied by the delta, B, delta P, has to be greater than a certain number has to be larger than a certain number. So if you make the position uncertainly smaller, so it's more and more clearly defined, uh, you, you simply must accept that your ability to tell how fast it's going is going to be more uncertain, and vice versa. Uh, and so use, using this, uh, the, this quantitative uh, uh, relationship, it, it's possible to, to, to then uh, you know, think through how certain uh, one type of experiment uh, makes it uh, makes it impossible uh, to 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 gather um, a certain type of information. For example, what I said before about the electrons going through the screen. You would think that you should be able to measure exactly where the electron went through the screen. I mean, I've got the screen, I've got two slits. I just sit by the slit and I watch, did the electron go through that one or did it go through that one? I should be able to do that. And if I know exactly which slit it went through, then there's no way I should see this, this funny interference pattern on the other side. But what the Heisenberg uncertainty principle says that if you want to, uh, if, you, if you want to uh, 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 locate the, the 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 position of your of your electron that precisely, you have to accept that you've made its 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 speed or its momentum uh, imprecise, uh, and, and and a direct consequence of making the, the speed or momentum imprecise is that you will wash out that you would never expect to see the fringe in the first place. So in that, in, that, in that way, the Heisenberg uncertainty principle is a, is, a, is, a, is a nice tool for demonstrating that although quantum mechanics has these 
these mis mysteries in its interpretation, it conspires never to, sh to let you catch it out. You, you can never show that it's inconsistent. And the Heisenberg and the Heisenberg and Sergey principle help you do that. Oh, well, sir, does the like EPR? Sir. Yeah. So you had the second part of that question was just your personally having studied uh, quantum mechanics for how mm -hmm. long you studied it, finding those observations that are sort of, I guess, even from classical sort of. Uh, physical mechanics and stuff like that. How has that changed the way that you've observed, and I guess, the natural world? Or I mean, the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, the, the main way the main way has changed the way I guess I approach the natural world or, or, or science. It, it's made me. Uh, uh, it's a lesson of humility, uh, because it, it, you, you, you come to realize the the. the, the that there's sort of a bound, sort of boundary or a limit to understanding. So it's a lesson in humility. It's also it also leads you to be uh, leads to a certain degree of skepticism about the ability of human beings to sort of get their head around absolutely everything. So that's sort of a variation on, on humility. Now it's hard to say how 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 it's how it's changed the way I view the world, especially since I'm now 60, and so I've now been doing these things for a long time. And so tracing back what caused what and how my thinking evolved is, 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 is hard to say. I mean, I would, I, coming back to what was mentioned over here about Eastern thought and stuff like that, I think, I think what I might say is that in quantum mechanics, that I perhaps have already had a sort of natural inclination to more Eastern ways of thinking than Western ways of thinking. Uh, not when I was a baby or when I was born, but I, I, mean, I grew up in a, a very standard Western religious context, etc. With all this church going and all the rest, but I, but I, my, my own thinking had, uh, had, had evolved in, in perhaps in different directions, uh, and so that when uh, I, I, I could appreciate the, the, the views of of, of, of of some others who who, who saw certain uh, certain um, similarities between Eastern way of thinking and quantum. Uh, now this theme is, is something I haven't thought a lot about in recent years and could go on for a long time, but I could mention just one thing um, about, it's, an, it's another of the, of the aspects of quantum mechanics which sort of, sort of softens the whole picture, uh, or dramatically changes the picture from, from, from the world, the mecha me mechanistic world of classical mechanics. Uh, I mentioned the one before about, about um, you know, just statistics. Uh, and so here's another, and this is perhaps the most the most strange one, uh, because if the world was just a big, you know, if, if science was just a big Monte Carlo game, then then okay, that's sort of interesting. Uh, it's it's not so challenging. It just means there is someone somewhere throwing the dice all the time to figure out which way you go. Uh, but the but the probabil probabilities in, in quantum mechanics are much more uh, are, are mysterious. Uh, and and the, that mystery mystery is related to the fact that that quantum mechanics. Uh, provides a, what you could say, a, 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 a holistic description of things. In other words, quantum mechanics describes the evolution of the whole thing. Uh, in technical terms, uh, it's, it's what we say uh, in, in physics, uh, it's formulated in configuration space. So we can get back to the example of the atom. Uh, the simplest version of an atom is, is, is the hydrogen atom. There's, one, there's, a, there's a nucleus with a positive charge and there's an electron with a negative charge. There's this one, there's this one particle, and when we when we write when we describe the hydrogen atom, we're more or less describing what the electrons do. But most atoms aren't that way. Most atoms have lots and lots of electrons, uh, and, and and the 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 quantum mechanics of an atom that has lots of electrons, the fundamental equation tells you nothing about where the individual electrons are. It tells you about all of them all at once. So 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 for example. Um, if I'm telling you about the position of, a, of an electron, uh, the statement I made, made is set in three-dimensional space. You know, it tells you how far the electron is from that wall, from the floor, or from there. Then I know where the electron is. It's in three-dimensional space. And so mathematically, I would use, uh, to talk about that, a function of three dimensions. Now, if I have two electrons, uh, what you would think is that I need two functions of three dimensions. One to tell you where the first electron is, and one to tell you where the second electron is. Uh, that's not what, what the quantum mechanical equations are. Uh, the, quantum, the quantum mechanical statement about two electrons is set in nine dimensions. It's not three plus three, it's three times three. 
uh, and if I have three electrons, it's three times three times three. Uh, and uh, so, you know, if I have uh, uh, 100 electrons, it's three to the power of 100 dimensions. And this is because it's, a, it's it, 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 the, the quantum mechanical equations tells you about the whole configuration all at once. It doesn't tell you the probability to find that electron there, that electron there, that electron there, or that electron there. It tells you the probability to find this configuration of electrons. Tell me where you want to put them, and it'll tell you about that arrangement. Or the probability to find another arrangement. Uh, you expand that to the whole universe. Uh, what quantum mechanics tells you about is the probability that the universe, the whole damn thing, is a certain way. And this holistic way of thinking, uh, instead, of, instead of building up the big picture by describing the little bits and giving them their properties and saying where they are, at the level of human beings, that means instead of starting from the individual and building society out of the individual, uh, we have a picture which, which starts from the, from the whole collection. And that's a very Eastern way of thinking. Thinking in terms of, 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 the, of the infinite uh, and, and, the, and the whole cosmos. I mean, you know, it's a very sort of Buddhist way of thinking. I've seen a few more hands, and we're getting close to the five o'clock. I was going to ask about EPR, but I thought I'd go, since it's like almost the end, I'd ask more sexy questions. So, um, talk about quantum immortality and what you think about it, or if it's possible, or quantum immortality. Okay. That's, it's if you put yourself inside the Schrodinger's box. And then live forever. Um, well, no, I don't think so. Uh, I haven't specifically come across quantum, quantum immortality. Uh, this particular statement. So, so, so. Do I, just, I, just, it? I just learned on TV last night that that, that, that someone is going to sell me a test which can measure the, the length of my the telomeres on my on my chromosomes, <laughs> and from that they can tell me when I'm going how long I'm going to live. You know, there seems to be correlation between. Them. <laughs> quantum mortality comes from the many worlds interpretation. So if there's multiple worlds, yeah. and if the scientist performing the experiment is himself in danger of life and death from the experiment, so if he's the one inside the Schrodinger's cat box, um, then in the worlds where he continues living, um, he, he never experiences his own death, because in all those worlds where he does die, he doesn't experience his death. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so. Sorry. So I guess what I'd say is that this is probably a reasonably logical line of, of, of arguing within the context that has been set up. Uh, but then one has to address the context within, within, its, within which it's been set up. Uh, I mean, you're putting your finger, of course, on, on, on uh, one, of, one of the one of the one of the big the big issues uh, in, in in the understanding of quantum mechanics. And you mentioned this business of measurement. Uh, 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 and, and how one should interpret, in, in, interpret, interpret the measurements. And you mentioned the many worlds interpretation, which is one of the more bizarre uh, in, in, uh, ways of trying to try, try, try to make quantum mechanics uh, so, sort of self-consistent without having to use the usual probabilistic measurement ideas. So uh, I think the only thing I could really say about that is, is that, I, I mean, I make a personal statement uh, I do find that the main world's interpretation rather extravagant and bizarre. Okay, that's the first thing I can say. So that, that's sort of a personal orientation. Uh, and, and the second thing I can say is that uh, on the whole, uh, professional physicists find it extravagant and bizarre. Find it, find it extravagant and bizarre. Although there is a, there is a subsection of physicists who, 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 who give it much more sort of plausibility. Uh, and, and, and they may be largely responsible for its, its continued development. And those, are, and those are, in fact, some of the brightest physicists, because those are, the, those are generally particle physicists and cosmologists and stuff like this. So I think the summary of all that with regard to your, you know, with regard to, with regard to your, your, your question is that I guess I find that sort of question pretty much interesting to talk over a glass of beer, about over a glass of beer, but outside the scope of what can be, what, 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 uh, can be said in, can be answered in any concrete way, you know, using quantum mechanics in ways that we know uh, are, are quantitative and practical. Uh, you mentioned the, the Schrodinger box, and, and, and I have a particular, a bit of a particular, a bit of a bugbear about, this is the Schrodinger cat deal, uh, and, and, and I'll, I'll only throw this out for those that know something about the Schrodinger cat paradox and, 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 and as a sort of a, my own personal caution about this. I mean, I regard, that example and, and similar examples as 
uh, as, as really as, as wild extrapolations uh, of the authority of quantum mechanics uh, because, because they use they use rather simple uh, the rather simple mathematical uh, constructions that physicists can, can can indeed use to describe to describe um, uh, controllable simple physical scenarios and make very predictive measurements and show that they work. So it uses it uses physics, which is proven to be very very powerful in a certain context, and it extrapolates it wildly beyond that. For example, uh, to apply to a cat. So I'll give you an example of what I mean by this. I mean the the, the, the Schrodinger cat. Uh, paradox is, is this sort of picture that you know you set something up inside this completely sealed box, uh, and, and there is there is this this radioactive element that can either decay or not decay, and if it decays, the gun fires or the poison spills and the cat dies, and if it doesn't decay, the cat doesn't die. And also is controlled by probabilities, uh, and the fundamental equations of quantum mechanics, in fact, you know don't let you answer one way or the other, uh, and so. The answer doesn't come until you look inside the box. So the whole implication of that is I don't know what happens to this cat until I look inside the box. Uh, now that is nonsense. Uh, if I go away and come back in six months, the cat's dead, for sure. Uh, and, and the point that I'm making there is that a cat is not an animal. A cat is a system that has to interact with everything else in order to exist. I have to feed the damn thing. <laughs> what if instead of the cat you had a, some sort of uh a pendulum that was set in the at the top of its arc, so it would start swinging if the particle decayed or whatever. So you still get a macro, a macro, a big system, but it's in in an unstable state. And if you know, if yeah, you yeah, yeah. So, so I think if you set up examples like this, uh, uh, where you get it as long as long as as long as as long as you have enough um, control over experiment, all the mysterious possibilities that quantum mechanics predicts, can a principle be seen? Will a principle happen? Uh, and, 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 and what will be, what, will, what will, all that really matters is whether any information escapes from the box to tell me, allow, allow me to decide between one or other outcome. Now in the case of the cat, it's not so, so much that information escapes. Uh, it, information doesn't have to be something that actually comes out. Uh, the information can be sort of uh, coming from 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 the non from the non -event. The fact that I didn't put any food in, in the point is that I know about cats, etc., etc. And so I can draw the the, the the completely positive deduction that this cat died. If you set up one of your other examples, as long as you can completely isolate it, then the mysterious things that quantum mechanics say should happen will happen, and people will start to do experiments like this. And nowadays, people are building like your little pendulum. They're building. Little, little nano pendulum, which are sort of small on, on the scale of this room, but are very big on the scale of quantum mechanics, in order to do these sorts of things. So yeah, that's a good idea. Looks like we're going to turn it around.